Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. And while that's drying, let me just go ahead and pull the, the top call because that's the shape. And I just want to show you here that we've got the length right, but I've got to add about an inch of veneer, just a couple little snips up in the corners up here because this piece is just a little bit too narrow. Now on this finished, uh, you know, this face veneer, I definitely don't want any splitting or cracking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of the perforated tape to reinforce the places where I'm likely to see some splitting and cracking. And uh, then later on, you know, this just gets removed along with the, the tape used to hold the pieces together. And what I try to do is just kind of bracket, overlap the entire cut line and perforated, thin perforated tape allows me to see the line that I already drew. And from experience, I know I get cracking along here, along here, along the bottom. Not so much along where the straight grain, but here where you're trying to make the curve seems to want to split real easy with with the knife. So I'll just go ahead and overlap that area on both sides and then I'll get the bottom down there. So now I've reinforced those cut areas and it should cut nicely. Now when I made up the bent laminated panels, I was able to assemble the veneer and the bendable plywood as flat sections and tape them together and then come over and put them onto the bending form. But now the substrate is already a bent lamination. And so I thought probably the easiest way to get the veneer in contact with that without having any shifting when I'm putting it onto the bending form is to start with the veneer on the bending form. This piece is a piece of the front veneer, the show side, which would be the concave side of the um, laminate. And so <clears throat> the plan here is to lightly attach this to the bending form, put glue onto the substrate, lay the substrate onto here so we'll have good contact the full length of the curve then put glue on the back of the substrate lay the next layer of the veneer on the back tape it all together put it in the bag and we'll, we'll have a good looking veneer job so to do this let me turn this back over let's put a few tape tabs on here that will later fold around and tape the whole assembly together as I jockey this into the bag. Okay, and then 
we flip this over and put it into position. And this tape kind of gives me some trouble along the way. And I'm just going to go ahead and just take some very thin capture on the edge of this veneer. This part will end up getting cut off. Get this perfectly where I need it to be. And I've got lines drawn on the form that tell me exactly where to put this, this veneer. It's a nice outline drawn. Okay. Okay, so this piece of show veneer is where it needs to be, and all I really need to do now is lay the substrate on here with the glue on it, keep it aligned with the existing piece of veneer, put the other piece of veneer on the back, and we're there. Well, this piece worked out pretty good. There's the finished veneer. So in, in use, it'll look like this. So now I'll go and remove this tape. Uh, I'll first of all try to wet it and see if I can reactivate the glue and peel it off. 
If that doesn't work, I'll have to uh, sand it off like I did on the, the you know, the substrate. Um, I didn't get too much glue bleed through, so maybe this will peel off easier. We'll see. Well, I was able to get the tape off using a sponge with some water, which was nice, because then I didn't have to sand as much. I just had to make sure that any residue was gone. And so I've done a little sanding on here with 220 grit sandpaper, and you can see how nicely that book matched and worked. And so now the veneering for this particular panel is done, and the next step later will be to actually trim this to size and get ready for assembling the uh, three pieces into the pulpit. Mm -hmm.